Good morning. Good morning. Phil Davis, Ancestry Lance, AncestryLance.com. My nurse shirt on here. Yeah, I'm proud of being a nurse. I am. I'm proud to wear a shirt that shows I'm a nurse. Um, I'm well educated and I, I've saved many lives, both clinically, mentally, and physically. Physically, I've saved lives before. Um, something I heard this morning, the morning time while I'm doing my routine, getting ready for work, getting my kids ready for school, I wake them up, I make them breakfast, and get them ready for the day before my wife and my younger son wake up. I'm rushing out of the door. Most of the time cannot say goodbye to them because that, that we're just missing each other. But that's the job of a father. That's at least what I believe. We do we do the hard work to show why we should be the leader. Um, I don't understand this guy. You got this fast ass car and you can't get through that light. But OK, we'll, we'll, we'll take it at that. He he's more worried about safety than anything else. One one thing I'm going to leave you with in your mind, if you get nothing else from this video, is in order for there to be change, you have to show change. In order for there to be change, you have to show change. You cannot just sit there and think that things are going to change because you said so. And this 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 can be applied to many ooh, so let me tighten this up real quick. Sorry, folks. This day, it, that this goes to show you the level of potholes. Supposedly, this is the Department of Transportation. We have so many damn potholes on the Northeast and and bumps. I don't even understand it. If the Roman army or the Romans were able to build roads to, like two thousand years ago, how is it our roads are still shitty? And I mean, you do have to factor in the fact that. In, in the northeast, there's a lot more cold, so co the asphalt expands and it contracts, causing it to crack. But I, I don't understand why, at least in my lifetime, it still takes them like two, three years to fix one damn road. I mean, talk about efficiency. If I were to run for office, which one day I do, I do plan on running for office. And thank you for people who keep asking me, why am I not running for office? It has already been in the plans I need a few people to get off this planet, and I think I'll be good. Any which way. Um, I, I would bid for a set price, and I would see it would go to whoever could quote me for the fastest amount of time to get it done. And when I say get it done, they would be held liable if it was, if it was a, a crap job. Like, this is how I would fix roads. It would not go for endless amount of overtime. You, the fastest, most efficient person would get the actual project, like to fix a road. And they would have to give me a deadline for completion that would have to be fixed at that time. And there would be an evaluation done as to whether the road was done well or not. And if they didn't do that, they would, it would be like they almost do it for free. That's how I would do it. Now, that might be a little too draconian, but it would ensure that we would not have endless hours of being stuck in traffic because there is construction being done. America needs efficient building and they need it to be done in a quick amount of time. We don't have time for people to get endless amounts of overtime to bleed out a project, to bleed out the budget so people can make their pay. We, we need efficient building. And, and that might be one of the reasons why you look at the waste, the amount of money spent on jobs. Now, again, I'm not saying people are not doing their jobs and I'm not saying they're not doing it well, but it is a gripe of mine because it impedes on the citizens' lives. Getting to work should be more efficient now in the form of how we, you want to step on the fucking gas, man. Up oh, here you guys know, here we come. My favorite part of the drive, the old, this guy's got a Camry, but he, you know, he's probably watching IG videos or whatever else. But here we are, folks. Let's see how the on-ramp merger comes. On-ramp. We are on the on-ramp right now. Let's see if there's any traffic, any cars in the left lane. We've got a contestant coming up here on the left. Clear lane merger. Now I'm going to get over early to block off any potential mergers. 
and it looks like it's a little bit more smoother today so i'm gonna get over and we're set to go continue on the video look at this jack oh yeah he's he's digging up his nose okay um so that's how i would fix the roads it would not take this long and it should not take this long and i've been in each state across the country driving or living and it's the same everywhere i go and i don't understand it you want to talk about one waste construction and building in this country it should be going up like it, it the fastest it can with the safest and most accurate way to be done it, it should be studies on people there should be some oversight of people watching the project and analyzing you could use ai for it to show how much time is wasted and i would be running live streams all day watching the workers like so that way it would be televised to show how efficient they are or not or are not being that's how i would do it i i would make sure that someone is paid to watch them and show how much time they are spent being efficient and how much time they are wasting smoking drinking coffee and just jacking off so without going back to the central story of in order for there to be change you have to show change when i say that i mean i have seen that in relationships when you have relationships break down when you talk about business relationships business evolution and ideas there has to be change that can be seen that is palatable i've been in so many relationships where people have all we've almost broken up and there's always been the promise well i'll change and what ends up happening is, and a lot of times in relationships, is that people change so long enough for you to not take notice and let your guard down. And then they revert back right to the same behaviors that led them into the same outcome of you almost leaving them or breaking up. They, they revert back to the bad habits that got them there. And what ends up happening is you play this cycle of rinse and repeat. I'll change and then I don't. I'll change and then I do. And it gives them an extension on pretty much messing up your life because the decision to cut them off is not so drastic that you're giving them a chance to change because we're humans, right? We're humans. We don't, we sometimes do not see what is wrong until the car hits us, until the, you're, until you're fired, until you, you're, you're out on the street, until the cold is pressing on your skin Sometimes people don't get it until the rock hits them upside the head. That's sometimes the level of people not understanding the, 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 what needs to be done in order to make the change. They want the change to happen without showing the work. That's why I always tell you guys, show your work. Take inventory and, and do the work. Show your work. Even in math, in school, you're taught to show your work because, again, you could use a calculator to come up to the answer, but again, you need to know how to in, input input the data so that way the answer can be right. And, and when I thought about that, it led me to the part of how many hours a week do I work in my regular job? And then how many hours do I work in Ancestry Lands? And I'm always working. When I'm working on in my nursing job, I'm doing my eight hours minus the travel. But even on my way to work, I'm recording content and doing videos. On my way home from work, I'm recording content and doing videos. At my kids' games, I'm making content, you know, small content. You try to find time to get the work in. And when I say that, I mean, you got to work. The amount of hours you put into building yourself up directly relates to how far you're going to go in life. It doesn't matter whether you have a degree. It doesn't matter where you do a trade. You have to put in hours in order to be successful. So again, when you're when you're looking in life to say, I want to get from being in debt to being out of debt. I want to go get a degree because I don't have a degree. Or I want to get my master's because I don't have a master's. There is a certain amount of work hours or input hours that needs to be done in order for the formula to equate that you will now get that degree or get that outcome. It doesn't work any other way. I put in about, I mean, when I was, when I was able to travel and I was off three weeks out of the month, I was putting in well over eight hours a day, seven days a week, and, and sometimes more, 10 to 12 hours. 
and, and it's it's no secret that I'm able to be successful, inspirational, educational, become an author. All those things are achievable because I was willing to put in the man hours. Last night on, on a Sunday night, I noticed from my neighbors, I could see people watching the football game. Well, I, I wanted to watch the football games, but I had work to do. And I did not want to be distracted in my work. I wanted to be focused in my work. But that's where people spend their lives. They spend their off time watching other people become successful instead of it. And when I say that, I don't mean that, hey, turn this video off now because, hey, great, Philip, I'm doing it to you. I, what I'm trying to do is inspire you, motivate you, give you actuality of things that I'm doing to show you why I'm getting here. I'm not getting here because I'm charismatic of a talker. I'm not getting here because I'm so well-educated. I've gotten an education better than you. I'm here because I'm doing the work. I'm every day in and out, in and out, doing what I'm doing now, and you can see it. You can see it everywhere. I can see it more because what's starting to happen is people are starting to reach back to me and let me know that my message is reaching them. And that is beautiful because my kids can see that now. Now I'm showing the messages of people messaging me back. And I appreciate you all being inspired by me and looking for me to take more of a leadership role in this world and fight the fight for you. That's coming. It's, I promise you it's coming. Because again, like I said, you got to put those work hours in. So if you're scared to put those work hours in, if you're scared to invest in yourself, remember, you went to school for 12 grades, kindergarten, first, second, third. If you went to college, you went through all of that to be just as educated as you are now. If you did not have that education it, at all, you didn't never went to school, where would your education be? Where would your life be if you were not, if you did not go to school? Now, if you went to school and learned something, versus nothing, it's still further than if you learn nothing. Even if you weren't the best student, dropped out, or you still had more of an education than if you did if you never went to school at all. And it still edifies my position that when you put work hours in, even a high school dropout has some degree of education. So when you actually put work, that, that same application into your life once you get out of school, drop out, get a degree, go to high school, go to college, go get your master's, whatever you're looking to obtain in life, it will never be accomplished if you're not willing to put the work in your regular life. If you do not put hours upon hours in and you commit to that purpose, if you do not, you will never see the change. You have to show the change. I, you know, my wife makes 99% of my dinners. You know why? Because when she's giving it to me, I'm working. I get the plate right next to me. The plate is given to me while I'm sitting down and working. I've had to remind her at certain times of how much work. Yesterday, I had to talk to her, and I was telling her about how much stress I'm under. And you can't tell me to just take it easy when I have your life, my life, and three other lives in my hands. When, when I feel every day that my decision can be one decision away from being completely successful, financially free in a way beyond where I'm at now. Or I could be in the poorhouse at the same time when I'm at those two ends of polarity in my life. And I feel that if I make one wrong decision, all our lives are ruined. When you have that level of seriousness, that level of pressure, the only thing you can do is vent it. It cannot be just removed by psychobabble bullshit, such as, well, don't worry about it. Take some time and relax. That's not going to help me solve for why. When I say why, I'm talking about the math when you have an equation, the solve for why. What is, you know, this plus X equals Y. What is Y? You got to come up with the answer. But what I'm doing right now is trying to figure out what X is. And if you're trying to solve a math problem, most people quit because it gets too frustrating because they're going to have to spend time putting in and plugging in different numbers to solve, to see if that will solve for why, if it will get you why. And that's because I'm in a leadership position. And, that, and if you feel that way, 
then understand that you're in the right place. You're, you're right for feeling that way. Because what my wife does realize is that she could say what she wants, but if she were to change roles or she were to get out there on her own and be responsible for this, she wouldn't be able to, what the, what are you doing? There's no room for you to do something like that. What are you doing? And of course you get over. What a jackass. You cannot, listen, will you see what that guy just did? You cannot get over in that tight of space when people are stopping and breaking. What, what a jackass right there. That is ridiculous to do that. He's not even increasing his rate of speed. He's getting over, causing me to slow down. He's basically getting over within inches. So if the car did like they did before, they're braking. I've now got to slam on my brakes in order for him. It's stop and go traffic. You could do that kind of stuff when there's nothing but highway, but that is a dangerous move. But it begs the point why I'm paying attention. I See, I can talk, not have to look at the camera and still drive because I'm focused on driving while I'm talking. I'm talking from my subconscious, not from my active conscience of the fact that I'm focused on looking at the camera. I'm speaking from my subconscious. And again, the only way I could do that is that I practice. I spent almost a year of driving to this job. And again, I want you all to take a look of something. If you take a look and notice, you'll see the foliage changing. You, you can see most of my driving videos. I started when it was wintertime. And now it is almost fall. The foliage is changing. It's something in these videos, you can see the weather changing in the area I live in. You can see how fall happens on the East Coast every year. And it's going to be a different fall no matter how many you see. And it'll be a different spring. It'll be a different type of winter. You'll see things that you don't see anywhere else because each season is different each year. That's also something I'm bringing to you by showing you these videos. You'll be like, man, I remember when it was spring here. You'll start to be familiar with this area and hopefully, hopefully one day, you come out to Pennsylvania and you'll see some of the same things. You'll notice some of the same things in these videos. But again, I've only been able to do this because I do this and I practice every day. I'm committing the hours of driving film to make sure that I, I hone my craft. And that's the same thing. A lot of people want, remember what I said before, a lot of people want leadership, the, the authority of leadership without the responsibilities. If I'm super stressed, it's because I understand the responsibility, the weight that is carried with leading. And a lot of people don't do that. And that's only because I'm putting in the hours, the long hours as a leader to make sure I'm leading the right way. If anybody tells you that leader, being a leader is a great thing, I would love for a, a, an efficient competent person to take the pressure off of me leading, but I am the right person for the job. And I asked my wife, do you want to know? She'll say, nope, nope, nope. What she wants is the ability to be off the authorization to lead like an authorized credit card user. That's what she wants. She wants to be able to charge, but somebody else has to pay it off. That cannot be the leader. You don't want an authorized user being the leader in your household, you want someone that is going to pay the, I've said it before, pay the cost to be the boss. But again, in order to lead and make change in people's lives, you got to show change and you show change by doing the work. It does not work anywhere, any way else. You can, you can take time off. You could take vacations, you could take mental health it breaks or whatever you want to call it. You could be in a wheelchair and you can make that an excuse. You can make, I, I'm tired today, an excuse. You know how many days I'm tired and I don't want to film and record, but I do it anyway. Because I, one, because I don't know if this video might be the video to inspire you, I don't know. But at the same time, I'm on the road to trying to get to 100,000 and beyond and I'm almost there. And I won't do it by stopping and making excuses. So stop making excuses. Start doing the work. And you've got to put in hours upon hours. When you get exhausted, keep going. When you get tired, keep going. When you feel that your spirit has separated from your body and you don't even know what you've recorded or what you've done, keep going. When you are, when you find yourself having recorded content or studied and you didn't even realize it, 
you're almost there. When you find yourself knowing things and you don't know how you know it or where you read it at, you're now there. You're there. That's because it's become second nature. So again, I'm going to tell you this, is that there is no change without you showing change. When you're with someone and they promise to change, what you should tell them is show me. Okay, don't don't tell me, show me you're changing. And when you show me, stay that way. I wish I had said that in relationships many a time before. When you want to say you're changed, show me. When let's let's let when I change something in the business, I have to show everybody what the new process will be. And I'm telling you the same thing. When someone says they're going to change, tell them, show me. Don't tell me, show me. Show me you're changing. And it's going to take a while for you to prove that the change is permanent. Phil Davis, Ancestry Lands, AncestryLands.com. I hope you've been inspired, enlightened, and entertained by this video. And stay tuned for more videos and more videos like it. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Don't forget my book, Getting Dollars from Dirt, is a beginner's guide to vacant land investing. Hey, Christmas is coming up. This is a great Christmas gift for people. It, believe me, it's something that you can get them and leave with them. One day they'll pick it up and realize what they had in their hands all along. It's a great gift to get people for Christmas. Start thinking of Christmas gifts and Christmas ideas. I'm going to get over. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. I always wave people off when I make somewhat of a questionable move. But any which way, my book is on Amazon. Link is in the description section below. Remember, if you don't own property, you'll be owned as property. It's time to show the change you want. Phil Davis, AncestryLands, AncestryLands.com. Peace, and I'm out.